This week, three sides of the coin. The Kiss Army heads are exploding with what is revealed from this week's guest who toured Japan as a reporter with Kiss in 1977. And this was a quote direct from Bill of Coin. Bill of Coin's at dinner and basically says, quote, fact is, this is the last hurrah for the band. After the Pacific tour and Canada, we record one more album and then the band's finished. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Are you looking for official Three Sides of the Coin merchandise? T-shirts, hoodies, and more? Visit shop3sidesofthecoin.com. We ship worldwide. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. You got four sides today because this was an extra special guest that Lisa decided to join us. I was a little late, but sorry. Ah, only a couple minutes. Um, <laughs> better late it, than never. Better late than Amen. never. It's always worth the wait for Lisa. Uh, anything Kiss news-wise that we got to talk about? Uh, yes. Oh, West, yeah, Palm Palm West, West Palm Beach show has been rescheduled. Head mm-hmm. over to kissonline.com for that new date. I will see you there. Liz and I are already planning on going down there. So, but other, uh, other than September. that, cruise? Kiss Cruise, Kiss Cruise, Kiss Cruise. Yeah. There's like a hundred, hundred, as we're recording this, I think there's a 100 rooms left. Yeah. So I here's, here's my okay. issue, everybody. And as I have a little, I have a date for it, but I have a bad feeling about it. I have a very bad feeling. My Why? date is because I don't think I'm going to make it. My Kiss Cruise date is. Uh, oh, your your oh your date to book. Yeah, I thought you were it, talking about the date to go on the cruise with. No, you. I know when the date on the cruise is. No, it says there are less than hundred cabins available. Blah 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 blah. Three nine. So tomorrow, is it the eighth? Today's yeah, the eighth. So Today's the eighth. At eleven a.m. I think you'll make it. You I should be good. You people, might you might get a basement room, but I, hold on, I, I, Lisa. All kidding aside, I will tell you, just because this is you know I've been on every one of them. If yours is what at nine, you said tomorrow morning. Eleven tomorrow morning. Eleven tomorrow morning. If you don't, you're so close that if you don't get one, usually there's a fair amount, at least a dozen or two cancellations every year. You're yeah, going to be so myself. It's going to cost me six thousand dollars just for me. You know, I mean, I, I'm going to be all by myself. You're not rooming you... with Mark. No, because I didn't get asked. <laughs> wow. uh, you dropped the ball on that one. Oh, uh, Mark. Oh, oh, I would go. I would go. <laughs> well, with we'll you, save Lisa. this I for just... three sides after dark. Come on, yeah, I, Lisa. I would go with you, but I just. Uh, I... One was it's playing. LA. It's the last one, Tommy. Well, it yeah. is Buck it's Cherry. Buck Cherry. It's yeah. Striper. Cherry. I'm pumped, man. I am pumped. I got the okay from the kids. The kids said, it's okay, Mom. You don't have to trick or treat with us anymore. There you go. Get out of here, Mom. Because I had go. guilt. I was guilty for 10 years. I felt really bad. You know? There you go. So anyway, yeah, Kiss Cruise. I'm excited. I just, I'm, I am a little bit nervous, though. You'll get in. Of course you'll get in lisa you're lisa from three sides <laughs> boom <laughs> boom hey bruce is going to be on the, on the boat you can stow away in his room I there can, you go i can share it with him and lisa there you go there you go like i just sleep on the in the shower i'll sleep in the shower. <laughs> I'm I'm sure. listen lisa if whatever happens that you can't get on I bet if we just put out the word to three sides of the coin that Lisa needs to sleep with somebody on the cruise, there's going to be plenty of offers. Yeah. I'll be in the bait. Like right now, all that's left is like, like you're you're in the bottom and you're like in a like 90 foot, like square foot room. I'll just be like this in the corner. I will tell you, Lisa, from, from, from experience, you spend very little time in your room. I know. Yeah, you're going in there just to collapse the sleep and that's it so but i don't want to be like sleeping on the concrete you know mm, well there is no concrete lisa it's a boat I, but there's all, i know that Thank you, you can you sleep on a chase lounge the around the pool Do, what sleep on a lounge chair up by the pool yeah. oh yeah that's real nice yeah 
sleep in the bliss lounge lord knows i've seen enough people yeah i was gonna say you wouldn't be the first (laughs) no doubt (laughs) we'll see what happens we'll see next week i'll i'll give you let everyone know what happens if i made it on the cruise or not or if i my god i think you're gonna i think you're gonna make it on lisa we're gonna get lisa on the cruise one way or another and we're gonna have some fun uh uh um all right so other than the cruise and west palm beach i don't think there's any other kiss news right now that's happening other than what's going to be revealed in this week's interview so kiss news we have elise krentzel author of a brand new book under my skin drama trauma and rock and roll joining us and you might be asking why would I care? Because she was one of the journalists that KISS flew to Japan in 1977 Clipper on the Kiss. KISS Clipper. And she spent the entire Japan tour reporting on the KISS tour. And there's one huge bombshell, head exploding bombshell that she reveals in her book that we talk about don't miss it you don't want to miss this one don't you dare otherwise you're going to miss another little piece of history that we reveal um let it roll and we'll see you at the end do you have something to say leave a voicemail or send us a text message call 320-515 Four seven seven one. Every month, more than 50,000 musicians, industry professionals, and rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and KISS fans from around the world listen and engage with the Three Sides of the Coin podcast. If you have a new release or a product or service and would like to reach this audience, get in touch with Michael to discuss sponsorship opportunities. Visit threesidesofthecoin.com. Three sides of the coin. I cannot tell you how excited we are to sit down right now with author, journalist, Elise Krenzel. And and before we go any further, Elise has a brand new book that was released the day we're recording this, which is March 8th, but it'll be out a week by the time you're listening to this. The book is called Under My Skin, drama trauma and rock and roll um and there's a definite kiss connection to this discussion elise thank you for joining us hey thank you for being here (laughs) so i i I just wanted to say i I enjoyed your drama and trauma just as much as i uh enjoyed the kiss part so hopefully everybody goes out and gets the book and uh, and uh, enjoys reading it like that was quick (laughs) Well, we, you know, when we heard that you were, and this is the lead into everybody who's listening and watching, Elise was a journalist invited by KISS to fly to Japan in 1977 aboard the KISS Clipper, and you spent, what, over almost three weeks there? Yes. In Japan, traveling with KISS. It was like, oh my God, we found somebody who was there. (laughs) And especially somebody who wasn't like in the band or the crew or everything else. I mean, you are, you've got a different view than somebody who would have been part of the KISS entourage. Well, we were part of the entourage, but of course it's sort of like a nuclear family. We were not the nuclear family. We were the journalists. So we had certain access right. to the band, to the management, to the women, um, to all the people in Japan who made it happen. And of course, to one another, whether we wanted to or not. Uh, yeah. Uh, sir. <laughs> hey, one of the things I thought was interesting is. Our, Mark, is Mark, Mark, guys... real, real, Mark, real quick. Lisa's joining us, actually. We've got oh, another wow. co-host that sometimes oh, oh, joins oh. us. So let me bring her in before we get too far down the road here. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Come on, Lisa. Where are you? There we go. Hey. Lisa Martini. We're already live on the air. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. We never know when you're showing up, but it's always <laughs> worth it when you show up. There you go. Lisa. Surprise. Lisa, meet Elise. 
Hello. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Same here. So, so Mark, Mark, continue with where you were going. Well, Elise, I, I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was cool. You, you referred to all the correspondents, all, all the journalists, as the KISS Army. It, it's, it's like your, uh, I guess that was like uh, almost, uh, what do you call it, the, the name for all the, what do you call it, the, the oh, Christ, I can't think of the name. I'm totally gapping. Um, the itinerary, everything it was right. everything was kiss army i just thought that was unique and kind of cool it kind of when you were saying kiss army i always think of the fans so as i was reading the book i'm like oh that's that was like your title or you know you guys it said kiss army be here kiss army be there or whatever that's because we were the foot soldiers in their marketing campaign you really were literally so 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 elise let's let's go back to i mean the whole way you got involved in the invited to the kiss trip was interesting in that you were 19 years old in New York City and you got a call from Kiss's PR company. Right. And you said no, I don't want to go. <laughs> I was a snot nose with a know-it-all attitude. And I had this highly moral attitude where if I don't like a band, I am not going to write anything nice about them. In other words, I was not brown nosing anybody or kissing up to anybody. This is a girl in the music business, misogynistic, paternalistic. This is back in the 70s. It's still going on today but much less so because it's all exposed. But back then it was like, hey, if you don't do this, you're not getting that. It was all prid, quid pro quo. And I was just like, really? Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that being said, I said, no, I don't like them. I'm going to write a bad review because I was into Brit pop an alternative and punk. Okay. Three weeks later, I get a call and they said, do you want to go? You can write whatever you want, but we're so confident that you will not write a bad review. Please come with us. Let me backtrack now. In those three weeks where I said no, and then when I eventually said yes, a lot of things happened to congeal and change my opinion. Number one, I had an interview with Paul Simon. I interviewed him at a Japanese restaurant. Now, at the time in Manhattan, there were only about four Japanese restaurants. Two of them were located by the UN and the other two near the consulate. It was not a thing at the time. I went, I learned how to use chopsticks as a child in Chinese restaurants every Sunday with my Jewish family and big loud noise and you know Chinese food. So okay, chopsticks were all good. So I interviewed Paul, I loved the food and then my interest was piqued. Okay, Japanese food, hmm, good. I walk down Broadway to go back to my apartment and I see an awning where I believe it's where the David Letterman show is still recorded on 52nd Street and Broadway. I don't know exactly. Anyway, I'm walking by and I see an awning for a play called Pacific Overtures. Piqued my interest. What's that? Now, prior to Japan, I was, a, I was into China. I loved China. I always wanted to go behind the Great Wall. And I had, as a child, been into science fiction. I loved Marco Polo. I wanted to travel the world. So, okay, Pacific Overtures. I take a look and it's about Japan. Bought myself a ticket. Was blown away by this Broadway show. It was basically introducing the American public to the novelty and the creation and the invention of everything that was Japanese from taking America's invention of the transistor radio and turning it into a consumer product, everything all the way up to Mitsubishi, to fax machine, or this is pre-fax machine, I don't know, fax machines, telex. Telex. 
yeah, telex, you name it. And then that was it. I said, you know what? I don't have to like them. This is so fascinating because I love gadgets. And let me preface to say that my father was one of the first salesmen for Panasonic on the East Coast. We got swag growing up. I grew up with stereo systems, you know, before that, you know, 3M 8-track tapes. And I used to be with my dad. He was a jazz aficionado. He had 3,000 LPs, 78s, RPMs, 45s. So music was part of our life. So I said, what can I lose? Pacific Overtures, Japanese food, kiss. Eh, I'll go. It was an all expense. I'm assuming it was all expense paid trip. You didn't have to pay anything. Not a dime. From the moment they picked us up in the limo from our apartment to the airport, not a dime. But before you go any further, though, I want for, for timeline sake, for our younger listeners that may not have known the music scene in New York City at the time, when you say you were into punk and new way of the different stuff you were saying give us a few band names just from a reference standpoint so people get it okay so at that time it was the sex pistols it was uh, elvis costello not really exactly punk the ramones the new york dolls so you went to cbgb's all the time and the oh, mud wonderful. club and the mud club okay i remember the mud club yes yeah very cool yeah mm-hmm now, yeah, now Lisa, I, I, oh, I was going to say, I want one more thing, because one thing that our co-host Lisa is great at, I, I believe you mentioned the dollar amount in the book, or at least, I think you did, about how much U.S. cash did Kiss spend per, per um, uh, uh, journalist, if you guess. I really don't know, and I'm not even sure. I don't remember if it was in the book. I know this. They took 10 tons of equipment tons okay but imagine you're flying first class they rented that pan am 707 for themselves i'm guessing and this is 1977 it had to be at least 10k per person that that that's what you said in the book it's in the book oh, that's okay. where i got that so lisa my dear can you do 10,000 us now how much was that in, in 1977? No, no, no. The 10,000, 1977. How much is that? Well, that now, excuse me. Yes, yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah. So, so while okay. Lisa's well, working hold on, on that. Hold on while I calculate that. Yes. Please so, so Elise, real quick. So prior to these, this phone call, you, you were aware of KISS. Had you heard KISS? Have you, had you seen sure. them? Sure. Yes, I had. I had seen them. I was as, aware as, of as 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 what as just you were at a at a show and that at was the show at a show because I I I was published basically at 1617 so I was already living in the city I had my own apartment and I had a strategy of how could I get known and to get into these concerts right for free as a journalist you would get into concerts for free you would get LPs in the mail they would send you tickets. They would invite you to the backstage parties. So I had seen Kiss, and yeah, they were from Queens. They were a New York City, you know, band. Do you recall where you saw them? Was it a was it a, a an arena? Was it a theater? A club? I I I really can't. I think it was the Academy of Music. I'm not okay. sure. Wow. Yeah, they played there. They played there very I, early I, on. I think because it was early days. Now, yeah. what was what was your your reaction to the makeup and the costumes? Was that one of the things that turned you off? Because you know, a lot of a lot of Kiss has Kiss has been judged through their entire career as just a band that wears makeup. They're not real musicians. What was it that didn't connect with you? I actually liked the fact that they wore makeup and that they had a stage presence, which was theatrical. It would be remiss of me to say I wouldn't like that when I was a huge fan of David Bowie or anyone that could bring theater or let's say multimedia. Mm -hmm. So I loved that. 
I just wasn't into at the time this heavy metal. Okay. Okay. That was it. It was no other reason. Okay. Lisa, are you still calculating? No, I'm done calculating. I um, have a, oh, go ahead. Let me let me give my let me give my thing here, Tom. Yes. Uh, Ten thousand dollars in 1977 is equivalent to about almost forty-seven thousand today. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. I know. Yep. I mean, you, you know, that's a kiss as as you described. I think it was over the course of four or five chapters in your book. Kiss really went to the extremes on that trip. They spent money and stayed the best places and did everything top of the line. My understanding was that they were giving it their all. It was all or nothing. This was their launch pad for worldwide fame. Japan was market number two, as it still is for so many, so many bands, so many musicians. So they were going to make it there or not make it anywhere. And of course they made it there because Kabuki theater mm -hmm. is as close to Japanese as let's say mm, opera is to the West or Broadway musicals are to Americans. Makes sense. Um, one of the things that has always been interesting to me growing up in Minneapolis is the music scene and New York City as a whole was like magic to a kid in Minneapolis. And I would love to hear just a few stories about the scene at the time. Uh, what was it like to go to CBGBs and see Blondie or the Ramones or television? Uh, just tell, tell people what, if you can, what it was like to be there. Okay. I'll can I you. just also, sorry, I'm just gonna piggyback on that. Um, at least have you ever been to the Great Gildersleeves Club? A couple of times. A cup. I mean, okay. I, it's been decades. I don't really remember it, but I was at my father's place in Rosalind, which is a Long Island club. That's where mm -hmm. I saw Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band before he was ever known. Yes. So I'll give you my experience. I was a wild, incorrigible teenager who was living way beyond her life way beyond her years. And I would go to every single show. I was at Max's Kansas City. I was into Mott the Hoople. I was into, <clears throat> pardon me, David Bowie, Nick Lowe, Elvis Costello, and all those kind of bands and people. And I met a couple of groupies who would help me get interviews with the people that I didn't get interviews as a journalist. So I wasn't a groupie. Ex Spoiler alert, read my book. This is <laughs> something that happens on the KISS tour. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and so what was it like? It was, I was thrilled. So is there a fine line? If you're an actor, you're playing a role, you embody that role. Do not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you're not convincing. Right. I embodied the role as this rock journalist to the T. I knew everything about the bands, who played what, where they hailed from, what was the key that they were playing in. I did play guitar as a kid. Um, everything about it, who they were in bed with, what their problems were. So I would approach it from this holistic point of view and hang out, you know, get the dirt if I could. Don't forget though, as a girl, and uh, that was kind of different than let's say Cameron Crowe. Right. A little bit different. But when you went, like, could you tell when a newer band uh, was making such an impression that you could say, gosh, I think they're going to go somewhere. Yes. Like did the Ramones have bigger audiences at CBGB's than the talking heads or 
So the answer to that, Tommy, is yes. I had the talent where I could have been an A&R person. I could pick the hits. I knew what was coming down the pipeline. And in fact, I used that talent in Japan, but that's book two. It's late in the book, late in the book. Hey, I got a, I got a question too, because I, you, you hit on one of my favorite bands. I'm a big Mott the Hoople, Ian Hunter fan. And I, I was kind of surprised when I was reading your book, because when you did mention them, and, and then, because a little bit later is when you said you kind of didn't like Kiss too much musically, I always thought like songs like Walking, you know, with the Mountain. And so that's kind of in the Kiss range. I mean, they were a stomping, rocking band too. And you could yeah. almost say the same thing, you know, the Dolls and Kiss shared a little lineage too with that sort of, you know, more upbeat, more aggressive music. I, I was, that's the thing I thought was kind of a bit of a dichotomy of what you said. You're like, you enjoyed the theatrics of it. And as you know, Mott was very theatrical as well. I, I just, I thought that was weird. You know, I, I was wondering if you just maybe saw Kiss as a flash in the pan where, you know, Mott built slowly. Yeah, um, I, I, it's hard to say now, honestly. I, it's really hard to say, maybe. I, I, I really don't know what I thought at the time, except just impression. And yet, once I went on tour, I was just blown away. I was so engrossed in everything. From the time we walked off the plane, oh my goodness, with 5,000 screaming KISS fans. And it, it was just, it, it was awesome. We ourselves were were treated with such high regard and respect as journalists and later i came to understand that in japan teachers and journalists are highly respected so i wanted to get a little bit on the dirt on this and i don't mean in a bad bad way but you're as soon as you get on the plane you're getting on the plane i again you know love that the story of you getting on the plane your observations on Lydia and, and, and could you expand on it? Cause I was hoping you were going to expand on it and the, on the plane. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but you, you kind of, Oh gosh, uh, what's the, I'm trying to think of a good way to, 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 to I was talk a about. snoot. I was a snob. I was a snob. And so I heard them and accents and it's probably because when I was 16, I was granted the lovely trip to Europe yes. by, my, by my dad and stepmom. And I came back sophisticated. The, the reason I say that, Elise, is because you're, you're a New York girl, too, as they were. So I'm not a borrower. No, no, I'm not. So, OK, so I differentiated myself because I felt I graduated from the boroughs. A little bit different. I was born in the Bronx, raised in the better borough of Queens. And I think there is, this is probably, I don't know if it's economic because we were all middle class. So it's not economic, it's probably education. I just felt, hmm, well, okay. Um, in the same way, look people, I have short nails. I've always had short <laughs> nails. I have short hair. I've always had short hair. Never had those long nails. No offense to anybody that likes that. Go ahead, be my guest. Except for me, it was just, I was more logical. Like, how could you work with that? How could you type with that? How could you pick things up? No, you have to use nubs. It, it, it that kind of thinking. <laughs> so did you ever have, did you ever, did you ever talk to, to the wives at all? Or was you, did you just yeah. never get beyond the observation? Sort never of? got beyond the observation. They, they were engrossed. They were speaking to themselves. We overheard it. We were not allowed to really interact too much. On that's, that's what I was getting at because the band you said was in the upstairs yes. part of the plane. And that's what I'd really like you to, to get into the, some of the specifics of, so you know, the wives were there, but you didn't talk to them on the plane. The band were there, but you didn't really talk to them on the plane. What was the plane? That's a long plane ride. So you, what, what, so what was 14, it like? For 14 hours, we journalists were in first class. However, they extended that first class. There was no one else on the plane. And the Clipper was a two stage. It had a, um, a stairwell to the upper cabin. Yeah. And that's where KISS stayed. 
uh, with Bill of Coin. On the bottom level were all the journalists and Al Ross, who was the PR manager. So I made friends with someone who was sitting next to me, some writer from LA, and for the rest, didn't really speak with them. There, I think there was one other woman on the tour, and she was the eldest on the tour. And I, I spoke with her a little bit just because it was like, oh, a woman. <laughs> Elise, so at, at this point in time, Kiss was deep into the mystique of never seeing them without their makeup. Correct. So Correct. had you prior to this ever seen them without makeup? No. So was, was there any little, did you have any little bit of curiosity or like, is that really them? Is that what they look like with no makeup on? Of course, because I even tried to sneak up to see them, but I couldn't get up. I was caught, I was caught. So they never I came tried. down? No, they stayed up there. They only came down with their makeup on as we were deplaning once we landed in Tokyo. Wow. Wow. It was a 14 hour flight or 13 hour flight, something like that. Wow. Now, now, basically, they, you know, you were told you can write whatever you want. Did they did they have any expectations on you delivering something? Did they have did they have you say, all right, I've already arranged that I'm going to have an article in this this magazine or this paper? Or was it sort of just their trust in you and your ability to make something happen? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. I, of course, you had to show them. I don't recall if I had to have anything from my editor saying we will publish this. That I don't recall. However, I did have to deliver the feature article that I was there to write, in essence. Now, why did they hire me is very curious. Why did they invite me? I was basically not really known. We had other journalists on tour who were from Playboy, LA Times, the New York Post, uh, Cream or Circus, I forget. Um, I'm not sure if Rolling Stone, Detroit Free Press, I, did I mention Playboy? All yes. These, yeah, all these famous magazines. And then, and then Record Week from Canada. So I was kind of shocked. Why did they invite me? But not really shocked because I had a strategy. As an unknown journalist who was not yet 19, how was I going to compete? Well, I did write for Circus Magazine. Yet, as a freelancer, there's no guarantee you're going to be on the masthead and be in these magazines every single week. So my strategy was to become the New York correspondent for Canadian and British <clears throat> consumer and trade journals. Record Week was a magazine, newspaper, that was for the trade in Canada. Well, Japan, uh, Kiss's tour after Japan was Canada. So they needed the publicity. There you go, it was a five page magazine. And while I was in Japan, Music Life, the number one yep. rock magazine, gave me the plum assignment of writing a diary, the Kiss diary while I was on tour. Yeah, Music Life is one of those magazines KISS fans are very familiar with. They did some amazing specials on, on KISS during the 70s. Yep. Um, all right, so, so you're on the plane, and you, you're, you're, you're describing the descent into Tokyo and the um, disembarking from the plane. It's like two phases. Like the band has to go out a separate door, ahead of you guys, then you guys follow up. But what what struck me was 
almost the military precision that this whole event was orchestrated of like, you just step here, go here, don't look back, don't ask questions, get in this car. I mean, and, and as you described it, then I could see why there's 5,000 screaming exactly. fans that are just mobbing you guys. Correct. Correct. And the Japanese are very precision like very organized. So it went off without a hitch. Still, we were guided by the PR manager, go follow this. And I guess there were Japanese people to part of record company or whatever greeters there to guide us into the limousines that we were led into, which then led us to the hotel. I, you know, it's just, we love to say on this show, timeline is everything. And putting yourself back in 1977, as you described it, this was like a head of state convoy. It wasn't just a couple limos and a van. This was a fleet. Yes, a fleet with kiss flags, just like a, a, a political convoy. Amazing. I mean, I mean, and as you were a 19 year old kid, were you a bit in the like, my head is exploding and taking all of this in? This is yes. beyond what I even thought this would be. Yes, of course. I, I, I'm in a foreign country. I'm, I'm listening in the limo. They had a pre-recorded message of welcome to Japan in English, a very high pitched soprano female voice like, Welcome to Japan. And I was just cracking up. I'm like, what is this? A little girl's voice sounded like a cartoon. And they were teaching it Japanese like, oh, hi, okazaimasu, which means good morning. And so I kibitz joked. I said, oh, Detroit gozaimasu, New York gozaimasu. You know, and my friend, my buddy on the tour, uh, who I met on the plane from LA, he was cracking up with me, but the rest of the journalists were like, Ugh, yeah, please. <laughs> were, were, were the other journalists sort of looking at you like you're not acting like a journalist, act yes. your role? Not only that, they didn't like me. They didn't like me because I was a hottie. I was gorgeous. I was which, beautiful. Which, which leads to that whole other story that happened. In, in, <laughs> don't right? tell, don't tell. No, no, no that we won't awesome. tell that. You got to get the book to read about that, that story that happened. So, you know, you, you get to the hotel, you go up to your room, and even you admitted this in the book. You were a little shocked that you and, and I think it was Andrew, was that your, so yeah. you and Andrew were invited or it was arranged that you two had dinner with Bill Coin that first night. Mm -hmm. Was that a little bit like, wait a second, we're, it's, it's like sitting down with, with, with the president of this whole thing. Why? What did we do? Well, that was my impression. And by the way, names have been changed. Okay. okay. In the book. In the okay. book. Um, Andrew arranged it. Don't ask me how. I don't know. I just got a call. Okay, let's go. Now, now this is, it was at this dinner and I, I, I think I emailed you about this. This was where to kiss fans right now, as we re repeat this quote from Bill Coin, heads around the world are going to be exploding within the kiss army. And I'm hoping yes. you can shed a little bit more into anything about it. So Bill Coin's at dinner and basically says, quote, Fact is, this is the last hurrah for the band. After the Pacific tour in Canada, we record one more album and then the band's finished. And that was apparently the plan, which is why I said earlier in this show, this was the last hurrah. They were giving it their all, musically, financially, everything. And if they would make it in Japan, then they w it wouldn't be the last hurrah. But, but at that moment, it was 
the plan that it was the last hurrah and and and, and the we, band was going to be finished. And we will never know if that was a stunt. That's very true. I mean, we the only person know. who could ever answer that is Bill Coin, and Correct. and he's passed. Correct. We will never know, because don't forget they were magnificent showmen, well, still are, and marketeers. When, when, when you heard that, did that cause you to come up with other questions to, to, to further delve into what Bill was telling you? Or did you just kind of take it in and go, oh, okay, whatever, that's what they plan, I don't care? Well, I guess I took it in. Um, if I don't have quotes following that in the book, then something else might have caught my eye, sort of like bling bling. And it was probably the crystal which was lead crystal on the on the table or the fact that I was eating a scallop for the first time in my life out of a shell. <laughs> so <laughs> other things were all, already just uh, in front of my eyes, just making me go. What? Well, and I, and, I, and I think we also it's worth <laughs> reminding Kiss fans that if any of us as a fan were sitting there, yes, our head would be exploding and asking a million questions. You weren't that KISS fan, and you didn't have those million questions, so it didn't, a statement like that didn't, I'm assuming, hit you the way it would a lot of other people. I think it's because there's a certain amount of cynicism or objectivism you have to have as a journalist. You don't take everything in, lock, stock, and barrel. You listen. Maybe you, you observe, then you question, then you investigate, when and if. I, my attitude was more of the person that, I'm the observer, I'm going to record everyone's impression. I'm holding my judgment to the side, and I want to take this all in. Mm -hmm. And I think that is reflected in my book, where I reprint the actual feature article. Yes, I love that. that. Yep, yep. Thank you. Hey, that I, 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 another quick question. Um, did, you, did you get any advanced like cassettes or, or records to listen to beforehand so you'd be familiar with the material? Because you didn't mention yes. anything. You did, okay. We did, and we had, a, we had a press kit, and yes, we did. Okay, um, were there, right, do you remember now, here it is in 2022, any Kiss song that you still like or anything that you remember from that? You're like, ah, that's a pretty good song. Any, anything uh, pop well, into your head? Actually, several. I, I, and I know everyone loved Beth. <laughs> and I loved Beth. But I also liked um, Rock and Roll All Day. Rock and Roll All Night. All night. <laughs> well, that just shows my age, folks. There you, there you go. There you go. So, so you did. So you did go. Hey, these songs are good because Kiss is yeah. really known as being not only theatrically but but musically. musically a, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, a rock and roll, a great rock and roll, exciting band. And yeah. you obviously, I loved your reaction in the book, uh, without giving any away, that you really are like. Now I get this. This is yeah. this is good. This right. Is, Right, I was a convert. That and was the best part, because again, you came from like that bar, but you admitted a bar snobby thing, and you're like, hey, hey, there's something to this. Yes. You know? what, yes. what was it that, sh give us like, what was it that really changed things for you with that? Because you went in not liking it. It was the thrill of what, 7,000, 10,000 fans? The thrill. I saw the Beatles when I, at Shea Stadium. Oh, cool. Growing up, I was a preteen and my, my babysitter took me. So this is a big statement, folks. And I wrote it in the book. In Japan, Kiss was bigger than the Beatles. And that's how I felt. I had this adrenaline rush. And when the the explosives went and then they're 
singing into the, you know, I'm gonna rock and roll all night. <laughs> and you, you just can't help but be part of that. Embrace it. Yeah. And, and you I saw, was swept away. I was swept away. And you saw how happy it made people. Yeah. And that made me happy. Now, now one. Well, one thing on the, that I've read about the, the Japanese audiences, and you were there, so you can tell us, did they sit through the whole show? I think for a large part of it, they did. And then at the end, they got up at more towards the encore, maybe one or two songs prior to the last song. So perhaps they were up standing for two, three, four songs. Don't quote me on that, please. Now, as somebody who experienced rock and roll in New York City, and then you're experiencing rock and roll in Tokyo and seeing that difference, was that a bit of a, a shock to you as just a music fan going, how can you sit during a rock show? Yeah, it was a total shock, a total shock. And we were sitting, for some of the shows we were on stage, off the stage, and for other shows, we were in the um, front, in the orchestra pit. And I would want to get up. And they told me to sit down. Yeah, it was, it, for me, it was frustrating. Now, the I got the impression that from Kiss's standpoint, it seemed like that whole tour was all about Budokan. They had other shows, of course, but it felt like, as the way you were describing it, everything they were doing was about the success of all the shows at Budokan, plus correct. that they were planning to record a live album. Live. Correct. So all roads led to Budokan. That is correct. And, and that, that in itself goes back to what a, it felt like a masterful military strategy of, you know, troop movements of like, here's our ultimate goal, we're ending here. And I, and they did, they hit and, their goal. Correct, and this is in no small part due to their partners in Japan. Their sub-publisher, okay, back in the day, for all the younger KISS fans, music publishers had a lot of weight it's very different today. Music publishers were responsible for promotion and promotion meant getting a record deal, booking the band to live gigs, and then promoting it to the media, also with the help of PR agencies. Kiss's sub-publisher, Shinko Music, they owned magazines, Music Life, they owned rec recording studios. They had connections to everyone in the business. So this was all planned. This was a master blueprint, if you will, between the Japanese and Kiss's management. It, it, it just, yes, it felt, reading it was just like, what an incredible strategy that was planned out and actually succeeded. I mean, the fact yeah. that it succeeded is is even more fascinating than just the planning, because so much can go wrong. True. And yet, the Japanese are that detailed in what they do. They leave very little room for mistakes. Do you also think, too, part of it's because it was a different time? Before social media, it was much easier to get people's attention. Because that's some of the discussions we've had on the show is, is that is music just not as good as it used to be? Or is it more that there's so many more things that people can do now because of social media that it's lost some of its interest for people? Well, that's a whole other that's a whole other show we could do. Yeah. But to answer you, Tommy, in my opinion, yes, social media could be the culprit. The issue is that bands can no longer make a living, period. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. Back in the day, 
How did they make a living? They made a living by going on tour. That's where the money was. You get a percentage, a large percentage of ticket sales. Okay? And of course, royalties through record sales. Nowadays, anyone's a musician, all they need is a Mac. You yeah. have MIDI, you create your own music, and you push it out there. Yeah, and 200 million other people too. So how do you differentiate? Well, it's called micromanagement these days. It's micro. You build an audience micro. It's sort of like global. We went global, but now it's local. It's the, the way to do it now is global. <laughs> Local, so you're doing it small, but then pushing it out globally, right? right? Yet, how? With 100 million streaming services, how? It, I still believe, and maybe this is old school, because I am old school, face-to-face, one-to-one person. It's about people. So yeah, they can promote it now through webinars. This is the kind of thing. Whoever's listening to this now, <clears throat> or has listened previously to three sides of the coin, it's because they love you guys and Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. They love Lisa what? more than us. <laughs> uh, they love Lisa more than us. <laughs> <laughs> the reason's obvious. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, Elise, I mean, doesn't it just come down to the whole, and I don't want this to sound like a cheap word, but the whole shtick of kiss was the mystique was the characters the larger than life that of worked course. back then in the 70s that could never ever no, work today it cannot work now because <laughs> there's hardly any mystique left right yeah right. what's it's mysterious going. it's it it i mean i am no prude by any means especially if you read the book there's juicy parts in there yet if I'm looking at a stage performer now, and some people will totally disagree with this statement, but I don't care because I'm not politically correct. Sue me. I mean, Amen. you know, listen, if you are practically nude in your Instagram and your Snap uh, videos and whatever, or TikTok, what is the mystique left? There's nothing left. Back in my day. Amen, Elise. Amen. Really? If back in my day, I mean, whoa, I'm wearing a turtleneck. Ooh, that's mysterious. But <laughs> back in back when I was a teenager, if I wore a V-neck, sl- uh, Dion von Furstenberg sling dress that was slinky, ooh, that was really sexy. Nothing was showing. Now everything is showing. If I see, I don't even want to mention the names. It's just like, excuse me, I don't know the difference between soft porn and what you're doing. Well, I mean, it's sort of <laughs> like, what, what, what are you trying to promote, your music or your body? Exactly. Thank you. That's what I mean. So, so, so uh, Elise, you, you know, and, and we could definitely have some follow-ups here because we're already at about an hour and 15 oh, minutes. But I'm I think I went off tangent. No, no, no. no this is fascinating. I really want to kind of have the wrap up you got while you were there. So you got to speak to each person in the band, Gene, Paul, Ace, and Peter. Yes. Um, I would love for you to just give us your one word or one short statement okay. takeaway. I will. Of each person. Okay. So and let's start. Let's go. What was that, Tommy? And Bill Coin. And Bill of Coin. So we'll we'll okay. we'll start we'll start with Gene Simmons. Disgusting. <laughs> that yeah, was that, awesome. Uh, that, yeah, that, <laughs> scene, that, that, that scene in the book you were describing, I could only imagine. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. No, no, we won't yeah. give it away. We're not. We're not. Okay. But but you know, and it's funny that you say that because he would sit here and go, "Why? Thank you." Thank you for that statement. He'd be all like, me. that was wonderful. Thank you so That's much. That's exactly that what he wanted you to think. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Paul Stanley. Cute. Was he 
did he come across as a rock star on yes. stage and off stage? He's shy though. He's he's a bit shy in his you know off stage. Right. Very humble. Peter Chris. Adorable. He <laughs> is a cutie. He is a cute. He is a caring a cute person. Ace Fraley. Innocent. I don't know if I've ever heard Ace described yeah. as innocent. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the biggest shocker on all of them. <laughs> Why would you say innocent? Why? I felt at that time, okay? Not, I don't know about who he is today. At that time, he he appreciated everything that was going on in his life. He was amazed at the success. So in that way, sort of innocent. Well, so, so that leads, so before we go to the last person, Bill, I want to, as, as a whole of Gene, Paul, Peter, and Ace, were they kind of like kids in a candy store, starstruck? Could you sense a bit of awe and overwhelm that these were, you know, just literally three, four years earlier, they're on the streets of New York City playing to 50 people. And now they're 5,000 screaming fans at the airport meeting them in Tokyo. Could you get a sense of these guys were sort of like in awe of all this? I would say what I, what I felt was that Peter and Ace were. Paul, a little less so. Yes, he wasn't jaded by any means. And Gene, I don't know. I think he probably took it for granted. He expected it. He expected it, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, so Bill Coin. Smart. Smart. Makes sense, yeah. Was, he, was, was, he, was he really the guy that was pulling all the strings and making all the directions? Was he the yes. general? He was. He was. Do you, did you encounter, other than Al, did you encounter anybody else from the KISS organization, the KISS crew? Sean Delaney, anybody else? Big John. Big John Hart, the security guy. Um, anything else? Anybody else that you might have... Big Dealt John with. Hart, if I recall, there's a very uh, special scene in the book. Mark, I think you recall, it takes place in Kyoto. Mm -hmm. um, he was there. You know, we didn't have too much interaction with the rest of the crew. Yeah, because they all had jobs to do. That's right. <laughs> so, so now... I, I I, I had a couple, you know, before we get just so they're because they're in my my mind right now. When you rode the bullet train, I loved your exuberance for uh, I've never I've always wanted to go to, to Japan and I've always wanted to experience it. Did the band and crew ride with you on the bullet train or did they take planes? Separate. separate, separate. Yes, we were separate, but equal. Mm. Um, and also, too, just curious, did since your trip to Japan, had you did you go see Kiss at the Garden? And Have you run into the band? Have yeah. you seen the band since then? Well, I stayed in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, I saw Kiss, I believe it was five or six years ago for their 40th anniversary tour. I'm based in Austin, Texas now. They call it the live music capital of the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Kiss got on stage, and this cracked me up. Paul gets on, and he says, Hey, Austin, not the live music capital of the world. And everybody started applauding. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hysterical. Did you, did, did you get a chance to see them? I mean, no. personally? personally, did you talk no, to them at all? No, I don't have contacts. I tried, I tried, I tried. It's, it's so many years later. Yeah. Did it take you back though? It did. It did. 
I did you take your it. son or did you go with, with some friends? No, I went with a friend, uh, <laughs> a, a millennial friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, when you, when you were there and watching this and it took you back, were you sort of like, wow, this really worked. Here we are, you know, now today we're almost at 50 years later, but they're 40 years later and whatever it was still works. I never thought they would last that long. Never. No one did. No one did, right. No one did. And it's sort of, I guess it's kind of like Elvis fans. Just there is a loyal and dedicated following generation upon generation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the parents that were fans in the 70s now have kids that are growing up influenced by what their parents like. And grandkids. And some and grandkids. of them have, yes, exactly, Tommy. Some of them even have grandkids. Uh, you know, I just, I sit back and it's just like, you were on the Clipper. That, I mean, that was just, I mean, as fans, we've seen photos, especially of the upper deck where the band was. And everybody's always like, who's that? Who is that? Somebody, is, is somebody here been on that? And it's just, it's a, from the pure fanboy kiss in us. It's like, you were there. You were on that airplane <laughs> to flew to Japan in 77, which we all know. Like you started off, it was a make it or break it right. moment for Kiss, and it made it for them. It made it. It sealed their fate, and it sealed my fate. So I am forever indebted to Al Ross. Forever indebted. That trip changed my life in every single way. It changed my life forever. And this I is a really thing. Him. And I thank Kiss. It's a cool thing to hear that it had that profound of an impact, just the whole thing, that it changes your life. And I know it's not just the band thing, but all of it. You just have oh, to look for opportunity where, where it is and you take it. it. It was a game changer. It's one of those pivotal moments in one's life where, you know, when they say opportunity knocks once, mm -hmm. well, that was the first one. That was the first one. And I took it. Well, because like, must, look at, and it must have at, been a challenge. Sorry, Tommy, go ahead. I was no, I was just going to say, look at the New York Dolls. They should have done way more than they did, and that kind of pff, fell apart. But they did go to, but the Dolls did go to Europe. Or they, no, they I understand that, but 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 they they didn't. Reach they didn't go to the top of the world like Kiss. Oh, yeah, they yeah. didn't. They didn't reach whatever potential they had. I could say that that the Ramones did, Blondie did, Talking Heads probably did. But the New York Dolls didn't. Right. And conversely, in Europe, one of the first bands that I interviewed when I was on tour was um, Golden Earring. Mm. Radar Love was the yep. huge hit. Yep. So they yep. did it in reverse. They had their transatlantic hit in the United States. But after that, you know, they were around in europe not in the states so much they had a hit in the early 80s which they oh. have yeah tw twilight zone was a pretty big uh well lisa you had a question oh no i was i was gonna say you know it must have been a, a challenge uh being a female in that type of role especially during the 70s i mean you said you were the only one of the only there were only two females uh, on the plane, correct? Correct. And the other lady was with Reuters, and she was probably hitting about 40. Hmm. I just think it's interesting because I know, you know, that's something I was wanted to get into. I wanted to be an entertainment accountant, but it was such a challenge uh, being a female in that <laughs> business. I mean, I'm talking like early 90s, you know. <laughs> um, and I mean, even then it was a little bit not like the 70s, but still not as it is today, you know. <laughs> It was incredible. I'd go into a record executive's office and he'd be sitting on, mansplaining on, an, on a desk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Or, or quid pro quo. And I would just uh -huh. walk out. I'd be like, screw you. Well, yeah, Good I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely a couple great stories 
yes. about how you were treated on the Kiss tour. That again, we are not we're not going to reveal yeah. it here, but it's oh. it's it's well worth the read in the book to, <laughs> to to just see what you had to put up with. Tell me about it, and I survived. You did, you did, <laughs> Elise. Um, where can everybody get this book? Okay, under my skin. Drama, Trauma, and Rock and Roll is on Amazon. Or you could go to this URL, tinyurl.com forward slash U-M-S book. Or just go to Amazon. Yeah. The easiest. <laughs> and if you would like to follow me, I have a occasional newsletter like when I have something to say. And it's just my name. It's www.elisecrencel.com. Sign up for it. And we'll have all of these links in the show notes as well okay. for, for making it very easy for everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, every KISS fan needs to, to get the book. We've, <laughs> o- we've only touched on the stories of what you talked about but you know uh, we had to we had to at least bring up that bill of coin bomb because in the kiss world we've as fans we've never heard that before now we know as fans that that 77 into 78 and onward was when the band really started to implode and self-destruct and and it almost lends lends credence to what he said to you, that, that in 77 bill of coin already knew this band was imploding and this was our last chance right um, but we've never heard anything quotable words coming from bill of coin to say that right. because it's uh, obviously right that is not the image that they, they didn't want to project that yeah no who would want to project it it's sort of like if you go to hollywood reporter the magazine and you're not going to read about your your beloved stars that are having uh, issues and marital problems or mental health issues until after the fact. Until right? it fell apart. Until it fell apart, exactly. I mean, it's the same in our own life. Whoever's out there that's young, who's a teenager or a millennial, you're having problems with maybe your thing, mental health issues or substance abuse or you have really messed up parents all of that kind of thing welcome to the club you need to to find the help yourself you know so that's the same thing you found me i found you fantastic now we have the big reveal yep elise i tell you what i loved your your bravery from a young age it was very inspiring to read and seriously i I, as 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 these uh guys my fellow co-hosts know and this is how, you know, Tommy, I, and Michael and, and Lisa all met. We all left our cities and went to kiss conventions and went places and, and did things. You're a great example of somebody who just went, you know, what? I want to go to Europe and look how your life changed. And then, you're, you know, what? I'm going to go to Japan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a chance. I love that spirit in anybody. And it's, 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 it's inspiring. And I always tell people, especially younger fans, because believe it or not, we have a surprisingly large amount of young people that watch the show that's one of the reasons that tommy uh you know tried to explain what the new york he wanted you to go into detail because so much so on a show like ours you think it's just everybody's you know like you know all of us are you know right around 50 and up and but there's a lot of the kids watch this and they want to know what New York was like in 1975 oh. Be- because it really does build on the kiss lore too. I mean, and, yes. it, and it goes into every other band too, you know? So, but anyways, I just wanted to say how much I admired the fact that you, you were, as they say, you, cause you're a New York girl, a tough broad, you went out, you know, you, you made your way. You didn't let anybody tell, you no. I thought that was very inspiring. And yeah, if, when, when people go out and buy this book from this, you're going to get, you're going to learn a lot more too. There's a, it's a great inspirational story. And uh, I think you guys will really dig it. Thank you so and, much. And let me just add, you got one of the coolest group photos with Kiss. Yes. Yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, so. Yeah, that, that was very cool. Yeah. It's, um, 
that was in uh, outside of Kyoto or Kamakura. Uh, that was a wonderful day excursion. Each one of the bat, each each one of the journalists had their own photo taken with Kits that day. That uh, that that photo is worth the trip to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. So. Uh I was going to say, Elise, uh, you know, we can definitely have a part two and a part three, because I'm sure as you start talking more and more in interviews, you're going to remember more bits and pieces of this. Absolutely fascinating. Just fascinating. You, you, you've, you've made some marks in history that were not there before. Oh, and this is going to be talked about. You watch. This is going to be oh, yeah. talked about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. For Just sure. Wait. So, uh, I mean, you, you are, coming. you are, <laughs> you have an open invite anytime you want to come back. Oh, thank um, you. We are, we are here to, to help with your book because yeah, it's, it's a great read people. It just is. You've got to go to Amazon, check it out. All the links are in the show notes. We'll be posting stuff about it as well. Um, Elise, thank you so oh, much. Oh, thank, thank you all. And also, you. if you, thank you, really, thank you again. Wow, is that fun? She's just got so much enthusiasm and excitement and just love and passion for it. And we're going to we're going to have her back because we went on for another 20 minutes and it was like, God, I wish we would have recorded this. Too. I know. <laughs> I know. We could just have a, a general rock and roll podcast episode. Oh, not my just God. About well, I kind of would like to do that because I want to talk about the Ramones and some of those other bands. I really do. Well, that could I be, do too. That could be there's part also two. That, there's also that line that goes into Kiss. I mean, it, it, well, yeah. And the New York if Dolphin. anybody if anybody here in the Kiss world, I, I, I really do think that sort of thing is very educational and worth knowing. Joey Ramone went to early show. I mean, like Coventry shows, you know, he was an early supporter, if you want to say that, of the band. Yeah. I mean, so anyways, what a great guest. Um, that was lots of fun. And let me tell you guys, you're really going to enjoy the There's book. There's so sure much more about Kiss in the book than we even began to touch on. Um, but again, I, you know, I think for homework, you got to talk about that quote from Bill O'Coin. Yeah. I mean, it's a bombshell. That was a, is that, is that, is that a bombshell to you as a, as a listener? I mean, yes, we kind of knew that back then things were falling apart, but here's Bill O'Coin in Japan in 77 saying, we're going to do this, a couple more tours, one more album, and then we're done. Wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. The fact that Bill Coin said that to a journalist. Yeah. Which now, 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 granted, as she said, master marketing, it might have been a plant. But either way, looking back historically, we know at that point in time, the wheels were starting to shake on Kiss. Oh, you know what we forgot to ask her? She talks about in the book, not not in depth or anything, but. The Kiss Rock and Roll All Night in Tokyo album. Well, yeah, it, I mean, it, it it is talked about in the book on how everything revolved around Budokan, the shows in Budokan, and the plan was right from the get go they were re going to record Kiss live at the Budokan to release as a next live album. That was that was the next album, and no Eddie one Kramer was there to record it. Correct. That was why. And again, you know, that again, you have to buy the book because in there she does talk about how, like Michael said, Budokan was the focus. Yes, they played at the other cities, but the laser light was on Budokan because of the filming of the concert, which we obviously have in, you know, bootleg form and then on Kiss Kissology, but also the album, you know. Uh, a rock and roll, which, which rock we and know is now Tokyo. floating around the bootleg markets as the Lost Alive Two album. Well, in some ways, we'll yes. Talk about that yes. later. But it <laughs> did lot lots of little tidbits that sort of cement what we've known and fill in holes of what we've known. I mean, she even talks about Paul Stanley writing a song. I won't mention the song. Yes, yeah. In in Japan, that was on the next album. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fascinating book, fascinating book. stories. You got to go get it. Um, Such a different perspective, too. 
Yeah, well, that's what I love because she was a journalist. She was there yeah. as a journalist. So her job was to observe, take it in, and write about it. And she also it, proves she also proves my point. My point has always been that's rock journalists and people who didn't like Kiss is because they didn't listen to Kiss. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yep. She is a great example of, of, if you want to call it my rule, that's it. She took the time to see and listen, and she was blown away. And she didn't come in as a fan at all. I love that. Yeah. She almost went into that, like, you're going to have to prove to me you, you're going to have to work extra hard to prove to me you're worth my writing about you. Exactly. And she's a badass, too. <laughs> love it. Love it. It, it fascinating. Again, great book, great read, great stories. And I, you know, when, when we read this book, we were, I am in like, did you just read this line from Bill of Coin? And we were like, wow, bomb, head explode. It's like, I didn't hear this ever before. Have you? Nope. Nope. I mean, you know, this is the moment where I sit here and go, I wish we could get Bill of Coin on. Mm. I wish we Amen. could get Bill of Coin on to talk about that. That's just to me. Oh, that's just on. amazing. Yeah, it's a dinner bell. No, oh, Christ. <laughs> Christ, Mark. All right. So you know what your homework is. Go get this book. Read the book. Let us know what you think. What did you think about that statement from Bill of Coin? Had you ever heard this before? Is this news to you? Um, I I don't know what else homework wise. I think that's pretty just good. Get out, go and get the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go get this book. It's available it now. It is. Mm -hmm. As you're as you're listening, it is out right now. You can get it from Amazon.com, get the Kindle, start reading it. Uh, good stuff in this book for sure. Um, all right. That's that's about that's it. it, guys. If if things come through, maybe a guest next week. I don't know. Still waiting to confirm something. Um, but that's it. We'll see everybody next week so you love the show visit three sides of the coin.com subscribe on youtube follow and rate us on spotify subscribe and leave a review on itunes we appreciate your support For three sides of the coin provided by larry davis voice.com and by jessica mars voice.com that's mars with a z